What's up guys, Thomas here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Jumper T-Lite controller and five reasons why this is the best controller on the market today. Let us open this and see what's in here. So the first thing I see here is this little design here on the box. It looks pretty cool, amazing. Whoever did the artwork on this did a really good job. All right, as far as the outside, there's no markings except just what it is. So this Raider comes in two flavors, two choices. You have a single protocol remote or controller and you have a multi-protocol remote. This one is the multi-protocol. We'll talk about that a little bit later and why that's important for this radio. So anyways, let's open this up. As you can see here, we're just greeted with some manuals. This is like a quick start guide, nothing crazy, really limited. Uh, information on here and we have a page with stickers on here pretty cool stickers by the way not nothing too crazy and this seems to be some kind of a connector we'll put that to the side and here you are here's the controller um, let's just take this out it's my first time seeing it get this <laughs> all right so here's your controller it looks pretty awesome hope you can see that this will be hard to see Anyway, so here's your controller. Looks pretty good. Not too heavy. Feels very light, actually. Put this down right here as well. See what else is in the box. You have your charging and sync cable. Fancy. And then you have an antenna right here. This is just an antenna that you screw on here. Pretty simple design. And then a battery case. So it comes with a battery case, but no batteries. Now this doesn't have a built-in battery, you have to supply the battery, and I did buy some batteries right here. We'll talk about this a little bit later when we, once we insert this into the radio. So there's nothing else in here. We'll put this back together, close it up. But yeah, that, that box is pretty cool, guys. This is a, a well-designed box. All right, so here's your controller. Um, we have a bunch of warning stickers on here. So let's start with the front one. This one says, let's see what it says on here. All right, please make sure the antenna is installed before turn on the radio. Otherwise it could bring damage to the module. So that's pretty uh, straightforward. And I've talked about this before in my other videos about drones and setting up, uh, whether it's a goggle or a transmitter. Um, you, these things are designed to broadcast and put out output with an antenna connected to it. So do not ever turn this on without connecting the, your antenna. It's pretty simple. Uh, we're just gonna put this on here. It looks like an SMA controller. I don't know if this, it, it really is an SMA, but it looks like an SMA uh, connector. I'm just gonna screw this on here, pretty simple. And boom, we're ready to go. Let's look at the other warning that's on here. On the back, it says, please make sure the battery is correctly inserted. Uh, it will cause permanent damage to the device and can even cause a fire if the battery is wrong inserted. So that makes sense. Uh, the batteries that's required, they're DC powered, which is direct current. And if you put them in reverse order, it could damage the product. That's pretty understandable. So let's take a look at the battery compartment right here in the back. Open that up. And it says, please make sure the battery is correctly inserted. Now there's not much <laughs> labels on here to make sure that there's the correct polarity on here, but we will do it anyways. So here's my battery. I did buy this separately. Um, I do highly recommend that you get a quality, quality battery. Um, this one here is by Panasonic. This is an 18650 battery. And this one is, a, I think, a 1300 milliamp. Let's see here. This one is actually a 3400 milliamp hour. So pretty high capacity. And that's good because you want this thing to perform and broadcast enough power to control your drones. So um, it requires only one. This one came with two batteries. We'll put this to the side. I'll leave a link down where you can find those. But in my opinion, you do want to get a quality battery, something with some high milliamp hours so it does um, last a long time. By the way, these are rechargeable batteries. There's a built-in charger into the controller. So once you insert this, um, this should last a pretty long time. So let's make sure we get the polarity right. Uh, you want to have the plus on the right side and the negative on the left side. So this is matching up pretty well plus on the right, and let's just put it in there, make sure it looks right. I think it looks good. And it's in there. Put this cap back on. 
all right it still feels pretty light and i don't know if that's a good or bad thing but it's definitely not going to make you fatigued um, while using this all right so let's talk about the form factor here or what would i see for the most part this is a very very clean design uh radio very very clean i'm really impressed with that the texture is pretty good it's it's definitely plastic. It has a nonstop feel to it, um, almost like a textured material. So that's good. Um, besides that, it's a lot of buttons on here and switches. This is a 16 channel radio, which is good. Uh, so you can have a lot of function uh, on this radio. Um, I can hear the battery moving back there a little bit. You might want to secure that. Besides that, yes, all the switches. We also have a screen here, just the LCD screen and it is backlit so it's pretty cool you can use this in dark environments i don't know why you would want to do that but you can see your parameters in the dark environment so which, which is good you also have these switches up here the two top ones are three position switches and then the bottom two are just uh two position switches so that's good and that's it in the back here just the battery compartment and then you have a it says external module so that's the reason why we had this little plastic uh port right here uh, you can mount this to your controller and you can have crossfire and crossfire is another protocol used for long range drone control. So if you do want to do some long range flying, uh, this control does support crossfire. The last thing I, I can see here is just the grill right here. There's a speaker that's built into it. So if you do move these switches, uh, it will give you a auditory uh, stimulation, or auditory note that something has changed, whether it's arming, disarming, turtle mode, horizon, acro mode, whatever you wanna do, it can actually tell you what's going on, which is really important because if you're in the goggles flying and you can't see the controls, then you know you've actually toggled the right switch. Besides that, we have two screws up here. We can mount accessories. We have a USB-C port, which is good for charging, interface, uh, firmware updates, and also for using this as a controller for your simulator. And over here, you have a port here to do like a body box system. So if you want to train someone, you can use this controller as well. Let's talk about the five reasons why this is the best controller on the market. That's a pretty bold claim. And you probably guess five or more of those things based upon the specifications of this controller. So let's get the first thing out of the way. The first thing that makes this the best controller on the market is the size and the form factor. This is obviously like a game pad controller. Um, traditional controllers are square and box-like. They're very heavy, uh, but this thing is really small, guys. Now, me personally, uh, I really don't care if it's a box or a game type controller or looking controller. For me, the size of what really matters, the portability of it, the fact that this thing isn't a big block, it's not heavy, um, that means a lot to me. Now. Depending on how you fly your drone, some guys are thumb drivers or thumb flyers. Some guys are pinchers where they pinch the controller. Some guys use like a hybrid where you have the best of both worlds. Um, me personally, I'm a thumb kind of guy. I would like to incorporate some uh, pinching techniques or maybe a hybrid of the two. But in my case, this is a really good form factor for if you're flying via your thumbs. The second reason why this is the best controller market is the gimbals. Now, as I said before, we have potentiometer type gimbals and we also have Hall gimbals. This is the Hall gimbals. Very smooth, very, very smooth, sleek. And this gives you the best control for your drone. These are found more in expensive controllers, controllers from, I don't know, 80, 100 bucks up to 800 bucks. And it's in this small compact controller or small compact radio. Um, the fact that this is included in this controller uh, I feel like I'm, I'm using a professional tool here. So the fact that it has it, I know that this uh, gimbal isn't gonna degrade it. It's not gonna lose its sensitivity. That's pretty important. If you're flying a drone at high speed, uh, at high altitude, you want your controls, your inputs to result into the controls that you want on the drone. In the long term, this is gonna pay off and uh, hopefully it doesn't fail. And trust me, believe me, uh, I've had another controller that lasted only maybe three weeks and that was it. It just, the controls, the inputs, it, trust me, it failed. <laughs> this is another reason why I upgraded to uh, the Jumper T. The third reason why this is probably the best controller the market is because of the multi protocol. As like I said, this thing comes in two flavors. You have a single protocol, um, and also this one here has a four in one multi protocol module in here. 
Now, what that means is that if you have a drone uh, that has a different protocol, if it's FHSS, Futaba, um, I don't know, FR Sky, then this most likely can control that drone. I'll leave a, a, a link or a picture where you can find some of these protocols on here, but it is a vast number of protocols on here. And that's good because sometimes guys will, and that's fine, guys will buy a controller with a single protocol, say FR Sky D8, D16, whatever, and then just cater their drones to that. So they'll buy multiple receivers or use the same receiver and transfer the receiver into multiple drones. So that's one thing you can do. In another sense, you can just buy the drone if you want to build it, or sometimes you get to buy. You sometimes you'll buy a bind and fly that has a receiver already built into it, and then you have no say in the receiver that goes into the drone. So in this case, you will have this control that can actually bind to those protocols, which is amazing. Uh, really, really, really good feature. So the fourth reason that makes this controller really special and probably the best controller market is also the fact that it can interface with your computer. And that means that you can use this for simulators. I have a lift off on my computer and I use that for sim training. Uh, I'm sure this will work in other sims as well. As long as this can interface with your computer, then you just plug a USB-C port in here, goes to your computer and you can use this for sim training. Now, uh, most of the controllers on the market can do that, some don't. But the fact that it has it here is a real good security in case um, you can't fly, your drone is broken, or maybe the weather's just bad, you can't fly, you just have the urge to fly, you can use this on your computer. For me personally, I just need to improve my skills and this will serve me very well now and in the future. All right, so the fifth and final reason why this is probably the best control on the market is, as you know it, as usual, the price. The price on this thing is pretty good. Um, a lot of people like to talk about cheap things aren't good or you get what you pay for. Um, in this case, you get more than you pay for, honestly, in my opinion. Most of the controls that have all these features that I mentioned before, like the hall gimbals, the screen, the 16 channels, the multi-protocol, all of those things are really expensive. And if you're new into this sport or this hobby, then it's kind of daunting to spend that much money on a remote or on a controller. So these things range anywhere from 50 bucks up to 80 bucks. This one here, I think I paid $75 for it, um, just because it does have the four-in-one multi-protocol module built into it. But these things are usually expensive. So to get all those features in this small compact form factor for that price is it's really amazing, guys. Now, if you're comfortable with this form factor, this could be your first and your last controller because I don't foresee this thing getting damaged. The gimbal shouldn't wear out, and this thing can bind to multiple protocols and numerous drones. So yeah, guys, that's the unboxing here. In a few days, I'm gonna bind this to my new quad that I just purchased, and yeah, we're just gonna go take it for a flight, and then I'll let you know my final thoughts on this controller. But let me know what you think about this controller in the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Therefore, you'll be notified whenever I do drop a new drone or FPV content. And while you're there, take a look at the other videos I have on the channel. You'll probably be impressed by those videos as well. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.